You know, uh, normally we talk about financial stuff. We yeah. talk about estate planning, retirement income. I, I want to take this time, you know, we've talked about this previously, but I just want to take this time and talk about, this is Thanksgiving. And for me, this is, was a momentous year because I crossed over a, a milestone mm. in my age. And looking back at it, you know, I've been blessed in such incredible ways. There, there's life always has problems, but uh, when I look back at it, I'm, I just, I'm incredibly blessed. Mm. And I, I want to talk about, you know, the freedoms that we have. We have, we have incredible freedoms, Jeremiah, in our country. And we compare this. I've been reading a lot about Ukraine and what the citizens of Ukraine have gone through since uh, Russia has rolled mm. in and tried to annex them, so to speak, mm -hmm. involuntarily mm -hmm. back into Russia. Mm. But the um, the freedoms that they're fighting for to keep, and they don't want to be brought under the control of Russia, and the repercussions, or I should say the sacrifice that they're willing to go through mm -hmm. to maintain their freedom in, this, in light of this world right now. Yeah, we have such amazing freedoms. And some of this is structural, some of it's personal, what people's right. choices do in, you know, for your life. I mean, all the things I think you're thankful for have probably a lot to do with um, your family and your choices and, you know, kind of how life has unfolded, but also a lot to do with the structure. And you said the freedom of what, just where we live, where we happen to be born right. is, is a huge deal. There's a, a, a podcast podcast out there, a guy named Jocko. One of his famous sayings is that free, uh, discipline produces freedom. Right. And I think similarly, we talked about like the rule of law produces freedom. Like if people in the Ukraine, because Russia has invaded their freedoms and their joy and some of that stuff is different than mm -hmm. it was before. And similar with our country, I mean, we've talked a number of times, but the, the rule of law that we have, the disciplines that we have in our country mm -hmm. provide this great freedom for us to live. I and mean, even going to things of like infrastructure, of roads, of things like that, like we have in a fantastic country we live in as far as you know, moving goods around. That came from, you know, years of building, mm -hmm. years of you know people that came before us who had taxes, who built roads, who did all those things. And right. Does that mean our roads are perfect? No. No. You know, does that mean we don't have potholes? No. But it does mean that we as a as a as a country have these huge benefits um, that have been built over generations. Yeah, and I think that, um, you know, going back, the Wall Street Journal has every, uh, about this time, just, just before Thanksgiving, they have a article in their opinion section called The Desolate Wilderness and also, and the Fair Land is the title mm. of it. And these have been republished and put into the Wall Street Journal since 1961. So it's an annual event mm. for them. And the first part talks about the pilgrims and what, what they sacrificed, first of all, to come to the new land mm -hmm. and um, just the, the celebration of something new, but also how, how hard that must have been. Mm. I mean, it, it gave, a, it gave a, a picture of, first of all, parting from people that they knew they probably would never see again. And many of these people died in transit, and they died once they got to the location. Mm -hmm. We talk about, you know, COVID and the devastation it's had in our country and as well yeah. as worldwide. But smallpox hit this, uh, you know, hit like Boston and some of these other areas. There was massive death. Mm. I mean, percentage-wise, they lost 30, 40% of their population with this virus that came across, mm. you know. the Anyway, we just, we don't really understand the sacrifices yeah. that they all made. Um and it was it was not like there was a city waiting for them to you know you could you could take your boat and come into the harbor and come into a hotel. Mm. There was nothing. And the time of year they came in, we have to remember they came in the latter end of the summer, the first part of fall. Harvesting was pretty much done. Mm. So what were they going to do to put all their foods together and and build shelter and all that stuff before the harsh winter? And of course, the relationship with the local Indian tribes. Um, I mean had the Indian tribes turned on them mm -hmm. um, and said, we don't want you here. They probably been very vulnerable and we probably wouldn't heard anything more of it, but, um, but they didn't, they mm -hmm. did have Thanksgiving. They did have a time where mm -hmm. there was, there was a mixing of the two cultures together in a time of celebration. I mean, we look back at it as an event that we, we commemorate right now, but I look at it as something that, you know, the incredible freedom, but also that what you say, the discipline, the sacrifice to mm. get it, right? Yeah. Well, even and you mentioned some of the medical stuff, like it is hard for me to even fathom and, and comprehend 
medically what things look like, um, you know, 200 years ago. Right. Um, what would be de- life threatening? You know, I have, I have four children and, you know, at that time in life to have four children, you know, I don't know statistically how many would be expected to make it to adulthood, but definitely not all of them. Right. right? Um, and I'm expecting that all of mine will make it to adulthood with right. you know, modern medicine and things like that. And that's, I mean, that's an amazing steps forward of, like you said, of trying to start from nothing to start and build an existence. And then medically knowing, you know, a cut could turn into this, that, and the other thing. And, and um, you know, a, a disease, you know, often would end in death. And it, it's amazing where we're at now. Yeah. Again, I think the freedom to explore, but also mm. the freedom to take whatever that sacrifice is. And not everybody came out on top. Not everybody had positive results. And yet the freedom is what we all kind of embrace and we don't want to take it away from us. Yeah. And even though we don't know exactly what the end result is, I would rather have freedom and be able to test my wits, my strength against whatever the risks are out there, rather than having it all taken away from me right. and being put in a corner someplace and having the government kind of control yeah. my day-to-day life. And, it, and it's a fine line. I think I want to bring in, I guess, one financial aspect we've talked about before is, is kind of the, the securities laws. That right. exist, you know, uh, people balk at those and don't like those at times and they don't want government protection. But like, right. I, I think back to, you know, there's the Securities Act of 1933, 1934, 40, right. um, you know, some of those have changed the way our country does things. But going back before that, someone would show up, almost, you know, almost like a, a, a salesman scandal fraudster. Hey, I got this company. Wouldn't this be great? And, you know, was it really a company? Did they really, you know, now a lot of people who have investments, they get these prospectus from the different companies they own. Almost nobody reads those, but by law, they have to explain all the stuff in there, honestly, about that. And that came about. And the issue is somebody reads it. Somebody reads it. Somebody, right. somebody reads right. it. I always say this is written by attorneys for attorneys. Yeah. The issue is that somebody reads it. And that's why you see these class action lawsuits. Right. Somebody says, no, they they violated some provision within the prospectus. And there's economic remuneration or penalty to yep. the company to reimburse to the investors. Right. right. And it keeps, and this is a good comment because it, it keeps the companies on the up and up. And the average everyday consumer who's investing in some stock, it's very different than it was, say, in the 1920s mm-hmm. of what that looked right. like, what you could trust, what you're being fooled about. And so I think it allows, like you said, that, that discipline there allows a little bit of freedom mm-hmm. to say, you know, for a common person to go and buy a share of Apple. It's a very normal thing to do. It doesn't feel that you're putting your yourself on on this risk or that it's going to run away with you. You might right. you know make money or lose money, but you're not concerned that it's just going to take your money and steal. And that is part of our system. It's, it's changed over time to get us there. Um, I, I think it's a, a huge one that I am thankful for, and I I don't remember to be thankful for that on a regular basis. You know, that we have right. a financial system that is stable and there's rules in place. Most of them because there was an issue at one point. You know, there mm-hmm. were people that were stealing and, and defrauding folks and. Again, we're not perfect. We still have those issues, but it's much less than it ever was before. Right. And and you have a system of justice that you can take your case before the mm. courts and before a jury of your peers mm-hmm. and plead your case. Now, we all can go back and look at historical events where we felt like that was unfair. But at the point is we have that system. Yeah. And that system is still being kind of evolved as we go forward. And as I see right now, the perspective of ethnicity and Mm. cultural differences and, you know, America. And, you know, this is what uh, this is a comment that that was said to me one time. He says, you could be you could go to Japan right now and you're not going to be Japanese. Mm. But a Japanese person could come to America and they would be an American. Mm. And there's a there's an immediate assimilation of Mm. of that that culture, that ethnicity into our in our to our society because America is a is still a great idea mm-hmm. is we're working through all the issues but it still is a unique country in the sense of what we've been given to be able to work forward on I mean whether you're yeah. born into it or whether you're immigrated to it yeah it's still a phenomenal place yeah, well, it was interesting even to think through just like you said most countries it has an ethnic and cultural background right and that's what makes them that country you know and that that idea Whereas America, you're right, that we have, you know, norms, apple pie, you know, things like right. that. But um, we as a country are a melting pot. We're a, a conglomeration of other ideas. And it is a, a concept, you know, of hope and freedom and um, the pursuit of happiness thing is, is a lot of what we exist for. And yeah, I mean, I, I would say there's no better time to be an American. Oh, my goodness. Um, you know, there's other times we think of where it was great and what was good and what was wonderful. But 
um, in the midst of all the things that we struggle with as a country and will struggle with, um, there's no better time. Yeah. And most people talk about scarcity. They think we're not going to have this. We're going to be, mm. we're going to be short of resources and food and energy and such. I have the exact opposite opinion. I think Americans with free enterprise and just the inventiveness mm. of the mind, I think of current uh, situations like what Elon Musk has done. I think what, you know, what, what uh, uh, Bezos has done with Amazon, he's, they've changed the landscape in such a way mm. that, but also, I think of some of the things that are, that are so to speak, on the table right yeah. now, things that are, that are being developed. I think of medicine. Mm. I think of- Yeah, so many changes. Uh, oh, my goodness. And it's not just here, but it's going down there. So therefore, I believe in abundance, mm. not at scarcity. And a lot of people kind of look at me with a cockeyed look. Mm. Well, we have less of this. I said, no, we don't. It's how we use it and what we can do with it going forward. And there's ideas that are being implemented right now that are changing the whole landscape yeah. in some areas, right? Oh yeah. I mean, we talked about before, I bet in my lifetime, I won't, I won't just have an electric car. I'll have an electric car that drives itself. Right. You know, that, that'll be normal in my lifetime, my kids' lifetimes. And I think even drilling down, like we have a great country. I also am thankful for our city. Oh. You know, we're in the city of Riverside and there's a lot of other people in the inland region here, different cities, but I, mean, I, I grew up in this city and then um, I'm amazed. I go places and I see just good people. We have right. a city full of good people. And even, you know, to bring it all the way down nuclear, um, a few weeks ago, I had a hose in the front yard that burst. It just burst, it was spraying water. Right. So I get home and there's a note on my door for my neighbor who says, hey, I turned off your hose. It burst. Sorry about that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, but it wasn't a, hey, you're flooding the neighborhood. Yeah. It wasn't a, no one did anything. Um, but it was a, a neighbor who came and helped and you left a note and said, turn off your hose. Your neighbor great. Knew, right? Right. And it was, is that type of a thing of, of I, I think we see the news so often and we get built up with this. There's people out there. We need to be right. careful. This is, and that's true. Sure, there are. But to drill down to say, well, well, these people, these neighbors, they're good people. They're doing all the same things I'm doing. Mm -hmm. And when he sees water running down the road and a hose that's flopping about, you know, just came and turned it off. You know, right. it's it's not a, a big thing, but it, it just reminded me of how great it is to have neighbors um, as opposed to just saying I have my people I agree with or my friends or politically people that are the same as me. But to say just the guy next door, it doesn't really matter. You know, in that moment, what his you mm -hmm. know political, religious, any of that stuff is, he's a neighbor. He's yeah. there and something went wrong and he showed up. And I think it's, it's important to remember that of in America, we seem so divided. Um, and some neighborhoods probably are. But for a lot of people, they look at their local neighbors. One, they should probably get to know more. That's an issue, I think, sometimes. But two, like they're generally the same type of people you are trying right. to get through in life. Yeah. And we all have human needs and we all have circumstances. But we find that our neighbors... They're good people. There was no ulterior motive on your neighbor's part to come and shut the hose yeah. off. He was just being kind. <laughs> Nor did he write me an angry note, right? It could have been that. I'm sure we all have that neighbor too. The guy sure. who said, your hose was, you know. Yeah, right. And this guy's just a, a kind guy, but it was good. Yeah. So you're listening to Jeremiah Lee and Randy Barkley. We're with Tricord Advisors. Jeremiah is a financial planner, certified financial planner, as well as an attorney. I'm a certified financial planner. Um and we're, we're not talking about financial stuff today. We're just talking about a time of year where you're going to kind of sit back and kind of reflect on where you're at in life, but also what's happened through this year. Uh, stay tuned. We're going to talk more about this as we as we come back.